it's a gun. Why do you have a chain? Surely it's not trying to escape. That hand is always trying to escape, he said. The chain is necessary. I thought maybe he was joking, but he looked dead serious. I changed the subject and talked about his guns. He had guns everywhere around the room in small arms that were loaded as, as if he were expecting a, an ambush at any moment. Well, we chatted for a while. He seemed harmless enough, didn't seem to be any danger to the community, so I went on about my business and didn't think any more about it. About three months later, I received news early one morning that Sir John had been killed in the middle of the night. So I went over to his estate, the gendarme was there, and the inspector, and police. I testified to what I knew about the situation. We had first suspected the manservant. He was there weeping and wailing. He was very distraught. We decided he had nothing to do with it. I went into the room and Sir John was uh, splayed out. His clothes were ripped. His sleeves were torn off. His neck was all ragged. Five holes punctured into his neck like, like nail punctures. His face was all contorted as if he had met some violent end. In his mouth, he was, his teeth were clenched on some object. The uh, doctor arrived and after a complete examination, he said that it almost seemed as if Sir John had been strangled by a skeleton. And this caused all kinds of uh, horrible thoughts and chills to run up and down my spine. And I looked over to that square red velvet and the hand was gone. The chain was snapped off and just dangling uh, against the wall. We went over and we Fried Sir John's mouth open. It was a piece of finger that had been cut, or rather bitten off at the joint. Well, crime was never solved. The, the house was not broken into. The dogs did not bark. Nothing was stolen. The, the manservant didn't know anything about it. The, it was a mystery. Uh, about three months later, I awoke in the middle of the night with a horrible nightmare. Three times I awoke and three times I had the same nightmare. I saw this huge hand, like a giant tarantula, running across my wall and my curtains. It was a horrible sight. The next morning, this very hand was brought to my chamber. It was found on the tomb of Sir John Rowell. As I looked at it, its forefinger was bitten off at the joint. Ladies, that's all I know of the crime. It was uh, never solved. But, the ladies and said, Did you, you must tell us what you make of it. We will never be able to sleep unless you tell us what you make of it. Well, I'm afraid I will not be able to allay your nightmares, but what I think happened is that the owner of that hand returned with his one good hand and wreaked his vengeance on Sir John. How he managed it, I do not know. How can that be, the ladies protested. No one broke in. The manservant didn't see anything. The dogs did not bark. How can that be? 
Well, ladies, I told you that my explanation would not much satisfy you. The hand by Guy de Maupassant. <laughs>